Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. Welcome to another uh, Dharma rant about my BKS Iyengar tributary. Uh, he's known for bringing the art of precision to Hatha yoga, because precision to him is a kind of freedom, and the freedom has to do with accuracy of placement. He reminds you to stretch not only specifically, but generally, from the outside in, from the front to the back, from the right to the left, from the upper to the lower, and so forth. And find where the median plane is, how you're extending away from that center line where your gravity exists, called the Brahma Sutra. God is the median plane, he often says. So your skin becomes the largest organ of perception that you have. Your skin is your nervous system turned inside out. And so when you use your skin to pay attention to what's going on, you feel whether or not your diaphragm, the dome-shaped muscle that separates the lower from the upper trunk, you can find out whether or not your breathing is calm and smooth as a result of that. When your diaphragm is hard, you get a lot of tension there. When your diaphragm is relaxed, you learn how to breathe deeply and quietly. And that's really important to discipline yourself, not only in your Hatha Yoga asanas, but also in the pranayama technique. Now, most people don't know how to maximize their life force. And you do that through increasing the circulation to your head, to your brain. Most people lose their energy. Their own biosystem is, is eaten away. Their own biosystem is eaten away by the intellectual brooding, by the turning your attention to things that bring you down and, and to a certain extent then clip your vitality. You don't have the energy left for important things to do because you're, you're so paralyzed by the analysis of too much intellectual thinking. So you supply blood to your head. Inversions are such an important part of refreshing you. I call it an inner shower. Then you feel like you're in a state of peace and poise naturally because of the kind of brain chemicals that you fire when you, you turn yourself upside down. And so that's a tremendous feeding to your nerves that you get. And then once this light is lit in you, oh, it doesn't fade. But you want to come back to it again and again. You want to um, tweak it. You want to learn how to tap it. You want to learn how to restore it. You want to learn how to store it, distribute it, and when you fall off the path, this is how you get back to the path. So you understand that this becomes your kind of meditation. Not medication, but meditation. And that really makes you brighter. You, you fan the flame. The flame gets brighter. You, you feel the, the, the bell of yoga ringing and singing in you. And then, of course, the idea is you climb according to capacity. It's up to you to see how intense you want to get with it, how fast you want to go with it. And then you decide... You know, are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? How do you balance these two forces? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Another thing, he says, pain is your guru. It comes to guide you. Most people, they feel pain, they run away from it. They don't want to know. Or they take a pill or a shot or something to numb it, anesthetize themselves so they don't feel. But from Mr. Angar's point of view, pain comes to guide you. And the moment you feel pain, that's when you commence your kind of yoga forensics. Why did I get this pain? How come one side is doing something, one side is doing something different? And then it's a good thing to look at that aspect of yourself uh, because it teaches you. You learn about yourself. And then if you're a teacher especially, it also gives you the courage to learn how to work with other people as well. So you practice and you get confidence. You practice, you get clarity. Practice, you get creative. Practice, you get compassion. At least know about that. At least know about that. And the way you know about that is not by reading books, but by hitting the mat and uh, putting yourself onto, you're the data. You're the scientist and you're the data. So you're the observer and you're studying yourself in terms of what you're observing. And then yoga becomes a fountain when you know how to make use of it. And then if you do, and this is of course our vision for the future, the world will revolutionize. When you realize the kind of people who practice yoga and what it does to change them, all over the world there's a yoga family that you can create to. It has nothing to do with whether or not you're in the same lineage. You know that you've all seen the vision of the universal, abstract spirit that is the source from which we all come. It's the source that sustains us. It's the source that we return to when it's time to move from body to not body. Keep on practicing. I'll meet you on the mat. And don't forget, Mexico vacation, the end of February, early March. Love to have you join our 25th year in Via Shanti. And as always, 
uh, keep making this pitch. I'd love to have some people come and help me with some yoga. So if somebody reach out to me, uh, I'd love to have you come over to my house and, and help assist me. I'd really appreciate it. Have a great day.